G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed. Now uh, this week we're talking about uh, bus wires. The sort of bus wires that go under your layout. Not, not these sorts of buses. No, we're not interested in those sorts of buses. We're talking about bus wires. Now you've probably seen over the years uh, a number of ways of going about putting a bus wire under your layout. Uh, one method that's very popular and very easy is to use a bit of uh, old track. Now I've done this myself and it's very simple just um, fit the track up under your baseboard in whatever position suits you and then you know you've got the two rails you've got your positive and negative bus. So that's a very simple method and you can solder all along the rail for all your feeds. Um, but it gets a bit tricky I suppose when you uh, have uh, a baseboard support in the way, uh, you would have to run some jumper leads between your track to go to the next section to avoid the baseboard uh, baseboard support. Um, there's also uh, a, a thing that I've seen mentioned a bit lately, and that's this um, uh, copper foil tape. Uh, the purple strip on here is is still copper. Uh, this is actually uh, recommended for dolls' houses, and this system really is designed to be used with uh, a brad that is pushed through each track to make the electrical contact and personally I don't like that sort of electrical contact. Uh, I have used this, I've actually stripped off the um, insulating material on top and then scraped the, uh, the uh, copper foil to give a good surface there and I've soldered to it. Now uh, it's apparently supposed to carry 5 amps at 12 volts. Um, however, once you start soldering, uh, you've got to be really quick because you can you can loosen the glue, and uh, it would come away quite easily. I mean, if you put, it's up to you. But if I was to use this under my layout, I reckon I'd be coming back in 12 months to try and stick it all up again, or use another method. Now, there's um, there's other people have come up with systems using these little uh, hooks. Uh, there's a chap in uh, South Australia who's quite well known who's used uh, one of these at one end of the baseboard and one at the other end and he's strung a wire in between the two hooks and put it under tension and then uh, you know that that's one of the bus wires and uh, you can strip off insulation wherever you want to and solder to the wire wherever you need to. Brilliant system, very good. Um, however I've come up with uh, just a variation on that I suppose um, sort of a more modular system where you can create uh, small sections at a time, you can add to it uh, and it's very simple. So what I'm proposing is uh, if you've got some springs laying around that you could use or just uh, lob down to your hardware store and get a, a box of assorted springs um, and you'll, you'll need some springs of some description uh, obviously some wire and uh, I'm just using a couple of bullet head nails and um, what I've done with these bullet head nails is I've just ground off the top a bit uh, and I'll explain why I've done that uh, a bit later on. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go into the workshop and uh, have a look at what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, what I'm proposing here is we'll uh, just imagine this is the underneath of your baseboard and uh, the method is you just take one of those nails that I showed you and uh, tap it in you could use different size nails, but this is what I'm using. Just tap it in at an angle. Simple. Now we do one at the other end, just to match that one. Okay. Now we pick out a couple of springs from this uh, selection of springs. And because it's such a short length, we're, gonna, we're not going to need anything with any great amount of tension in it. And I'm only going to use a light wire. So these, these ones here are quite elastic, I suppose, for lack of a better description. They're quite elastic in the way they feel. So I'll use those. Now I've got myself some copper wire here. It's only light gauge stuff. And I've stripped it of its insulation. So I'm just going to put it through one of the rings on the uh, on the spring and twist it around uh, quite a few times so that it, it takes quite well 
and you can see that you can see where I'm going with this and that just fits onto the spring now you put the other spring on the other end and feed the wire through there and pull the wire until you've got some tension on the springs like so now what we'll do is we'll trim that off and uh, allow a little bit there to wind around like we did in the first place just wind that around a few times now to secure it and make sure nothing actually goes wrong we've got our bus there now the reason I've used the springs is because if you knock this thing nothing happens if that was a, a, a wire under tension if I pulled it tight around there and you, you hit that with anything you know like a hammer or something like that or you knock it with the screwdriver there's a chance you could break that but with the springs nothing's going to happen so um, to secure the wire uh, all I'll do is add a bit of solder to it uh, if I can find my solder it's around here somewhere okay here we go now we'll just add some solder to the wire like that and basically ensures that it won't unravel now you know I mentioned earlier that uh, I'd ground off the top of the nails well what I'm doing here is I'm going to bring some heat to the head of this nail and I'm going to put some solder on there like so might as well do the same on the other one you got to let the iron sit on the nail head for a little bit and then it'll take the solder quite easily but uh, you've got it. You've got to hit the nail with a file or grind it to give the solder a good surface to take to. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You'll be all there. That you'll be there all day trying to trying to get it to work. Right now, to prove it's going to work, what we do is put the meter on it. So I'll just touch the wire there, touch the nail, and you've got conductivity. Touch it on this one. Uh, touch the two nails. It works. Uh, pull it. Well, obviously it will work then. Uh, let's see. I'll drag it. I'll drag it with the probe. Put it on the nail, and it's working wherever you put it. Now, um, obviously, with being a bus, you can then solder wire anywhere along the length of that. Now, I know that's a short length, and you say, well, you know, that's a bit of a waste of time, Gormo. What are you, what are you bothering doing that for? Um, but uh, you know under a baseboard this sort of thing could be quite a lot longer and uh, there you go you can what you can do with this if you need to make a longer one you just simply slip that off and start again or if you need to turn a corner here you can go that way or you can slip another spring over the top and pull it down that way uh, you can have a, a parallel one running here for the positive negative that sort of thing it's that easy now to power the bus all we need to do is uh, solder a wire onto that nail there you go and uh, we're done so this this really I, I suppose what I'm showing you here is um, it's, it's like a modular system, it's a daisy chain system. You can add as many to this or as, as few as you like and uh, because it's, it's flexible like that it's not going to get damaged. Um, it's up to you whether you leave the insulation on or take it off. You might want to leave it on and just do little breaks here and there. You don't have to use nails, you could use screws. Uh, you know, the world's your oyster with this sort of thing. It's, it's fairly simple, it's cheap and it works. So. That's all I can tell you. So there you go folks. Uh, that's my sort of variation on uh, a bus wire. Um, 
I think it, it could be quite handy, uh, especially if you're um, sort of negotiating around uh, baseboard supports and all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, give it a go, see what you think. <laughs> or you maybe you could play a tune on it. See you next week. Cheers, Gourmet.